Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Terry James Gingrass, and this is Dr. G's ADHD Chat. This is a show for trying to make the world safe for ADHDers. I am a clinical neuropsychologist in private practice. I, at this stage of my career, I do mostly evaluations, but I've pretty much done all the things you can do with ADHD. Uh, right now, the practice, uh, we do kids all the way up to adults. Some adults that are really old, uh, when you think about it. Uh, I've had people who are 70 years old wondering if they have ADHD. Anyway, so I guess on the, on the one hand, that's kind of good because it means that we're getting more, uh, more publicity and, and more awareness that there is such a thing. On the other hand, I still see stuff and I'd see it a lot of times in some of these ADHD forums that I routinely go to suggesting that people are still dealing with the idea that it is a result of poor planning or poor pregnancy nutrition or something totally besides what it is which is a neurologic condition that is passed on from generation to generation and um, probably causes more problems for people than virtually any other diagnosis, at least in the mental health category. And then we wonder, well, why are we really calling it a mental health diagnosis if it's a, uh, what do I want to say, if it's a uh, neurologic condition? Ah, it's just the tr that's the problem that when tradition or history or something uh, takes over for science, and of course you know when back back when they were naming this stuff and deciding where to put it, what category to put it in, and all that sort of thing, we didn't have a lot of the scientific procedures, instrumentation, et cetera, et cetera, that we could actually tell that this is by George. No kidding, a diagnosis that is a neurologic condition. So, last time I talked about ADHD and anxiety and you know one of the one of the hardest things for an ADHD child is to not know that they have ADHD. To, to, to not know that they're just a little different than the other kids. And you've got to be real careful with that because, um, well, most of us want to be just like everybody else. But, um, you know, with, as an ADHD child, uh, you've got some things that are different that are going to cause you some difficulties if you don't learn how to handle them. I mean, that's just the way it is, and there's nothing, you know, any parent can do about it uh, by pretending it doesn't exist or, or any of that. Matter of fact, that's about the worst thing you can do, is just pretend that it's totally because they don't have enough willpower to stay focused, to stay quiet, to do what they're supposed to do when they're supposed to do it. Well, and that's a lot of times when an ADHD child starts getting depressed. Okay, now depression, again, we have the famous three characteristics. We have a cognitive component, we have an affective component, which is an emotional, and we have a physiological component, that is what it does to your body, basically. Okay? Uh, cognitive stuff is basically, uh, I'm worthless, I'll always be worthless. There's nothing I can do about it. It's hopeless. That kind of cognitive run in your head, you know, and belief system in your head. And, you know, when you think about you're in school, you're the only one who can't sit still. Uh, you're the only one who can't pay attention. Um, you're the only one who seems to get into trouble all the time. 
it is easy to draw the conclusion that there's something wrong with you, especially if nobody's helped you out and said, you know, son, you've got a very special brain. Your brain's a little different from other people's, okay? Doesn't mean you're not as smart as everybody else, but your brain works a little differently. So you're gonna have to learn how to, how to handle your different kind of brain, okay? But if you don't tell them that, if you don't get them in, involved in some kind of therapy, or if you're not really good at that kind of encouragement, they're going to think there's something bad wrong with them. You know, maybe I'm stupid. Maybe I am lazy. You know, I mean, that's what a kid, you know, kids are building their self-concept their entire, well, basically we're building it our entire lives, but uh, we get a lot of it locked in before we hit middle school. You know, by that time you've decided if you think you're stupid or if you know you can get good grades or uh, if you know that um, you're a good athlete and uh, you know that uh, sometimes you get a little more too exuberant and get into trouble. But it doesn't mean that you're bad. And that's what a lot of kids get. And I, I see it even nowadays. I see, I get, one of the things you do when you do an evaluation is you have to get feedback. Uh, and when it's a kid, you get feedback from the parents and you get it from the teachers. And the teachers, I, I get some of this feedback I get back. And these are people who work with our children and are supposed to be trained with, in ADHD. In Virginia, there's a law that mandates that they get a certain amount of training every year. I've talked to a lot of teachers and they say it isn't really worth much. It's not a very good uh, program, uh, but hey, they're supposed to be trained in it. And I still get things like, you know, Billy's a really bright kid. If he would just apply himself and work a little harder, <laughs> or if she just pay attention, she could do so much better. It's like, they're crying out loud. We're talking ADHD here. They don't have control over that. They don't, you know, <laughs> it's part of the, one of the characteristics of the disorder uh, is that you have problems paying attention. Uh, you have problems staying focused. You have problems getting started on your work. You have problems finishing your work. Uh, that's part of the disorder. And yet I still have Teachers, no, no, not all teachers. I mean, there are some really great ones. I'm, I don't mean to put anybody down who's a teacher, uh, especially the ones that are still trying to save the world. They're the, they're the good people. Anyways, but that you're they're treating ADHD like it's, it's a problem with willpower, and it has got nothing to do with willpower, okay? Nobody wants to be in trouble all the time. Nobody wants to have all kinds of notes sent home. Nobody wants to have homework stacked up that you probably can't see how you'll ever get done with it. That's not what anybody wants. No kid wants that. No adult wants that. Okay? But when you're in that situation and you don't have any explanation for why you're there except that it must be something about you. That is something that's going to cause you to have a really negative view of yourself, really low self-esteem, right? That's the way you develop it. You know, you don't develop it because everybody's telling you you're wonderful all the time. Although sometimes that can happen. You know, when everybody's telling you you're wonderful all the time, so you quit working and then your results go to pot. Um, you know, it's one of the interesting things, I think, is if you have a really bright kid, one of the worst things you can do is praise them for being intelligent. No, no, you want to tr praise them for how hard they work at things. Because eventually, no matter how naturally bright your kid may be, or gifted, there's going to come a point in time, it 
may not be till middle school. It may not be till high school. It may even not be till college. But sometime, rubber's going to hit the road, and they're going to have to really put in an effort to, to do well. And so praising them more for the effort they put in uh, for triag is a much better solution, a uh, much better way to handle things uh, than just praising them for intelligence. That's like praising them for having blonde hair or something. You want. <laughs> they have no control over that. Uh, it just happens. And, and so they don't, they don't feel like they have to do anything about it. Anyway, that's a little bit of a diatribe off, off the mark. Okay, that's the cognitive component of depression. The affective component of depression is just what you would think if you were thinking terrible things about yourself. You're sad. You're unhappy. Nothing feels good. Nothing makes you happy. I mean, this is getting kind of extreme. You know, with little kids, you don't get as much of that, but you get some of it. So, And then the last one is the physiological stuff, and that's... That's usually pretty extreme. That's when it's there's no appetite. There's uh, there's either not being able to get to sleep, not staying asleep, uh, or sometimes in extreme cases you get hypersomnia where they just always want to sleep, and that's not. Wait a minute. If you got a teenager, don't don't jump on that one. Okay, all teenagers are <laughs> hypersomniacs. Okay, uh, but the and it's basically it's because of the depression so the best thing the first thing as a parent that you need to be looking at is you gotta find out what's going on with your kid okay I mean there are a lot of reasons why people don't uh, parents don't uh, aggressively treat their kids uh, you know, one is Honestly, one of the things you have to, to deal with if you've got an ADHD kid is sometimes it's kind of embarrassing. You know? Sometimes it's kind of, oh, God, I spent my whole life trying to avoid being in that situation, and he's in it every week or she's in it every week, uh, you know, as far as like going to the principal or whatever, being in trouble, getting kicked off the team, all those kinds of things. Uh, so as parents, sometimes we have troubles. Uh, thinking it's something more than just something we did wrong. You know, I mean, I guarantee you, uh, if you're uh, an adult with kids now, you know a lot about guilt. Okay, we just that's just the way most of us were raised, um, and uh, the problem with that is that sometimes it makes you ineffectual in dealing with with your child. You need to recognize real fast, is this like just a regular kid that I'm, I'm working with that's got got an attitude problem and we need to work on that? Or is it very possibly ADHD and I need to get it looked at, I need to get it checked? One of the things you can do is look at your family histories, yours and your spouse's. And do you have either a lot of people who've been diagnosed with ADHD or a lot of people who should have been diagnosed with ADHD? Um, I know, and I know, you know, 30 years ago, a lot of people weren't going in to be evaluated for ADHD, or not as many anyway. But if you've got a lot of relatives who were underperformers in school, they didn't necessarily have learning disabilities. They just never did very well in school. Uh, a lot of times, those that's a that's a clue that there may be some ADHD there, that they didn't do well in school because they because they couldn't because they didn't know how to pay attention because they didn't have any help. Um, so if you've got a lot of a lot of folks like that or marginal performers in school, uh, but then got out of school and you know now they own the the biggest construction company in three states or the best uh, auto repair shop in three counties or 
you know, usually they do something that's a little more hands-on. A uh, few of them will end up working in cubicles. Uh, cubicles will drive them absolutely nuts. So they will hopefully stay away from cubicles. Um, and But you have to look at your family history. And you now sometimes families, it's hard to get good information. Um, but if from what you know, there are some possibilities that that's what's been going on including, by the way, uh, a lot of substance abuse issues. Um, a lot of times, uh, ADHDers who haven't been treated will uh, become substance abusers of some sort. You know, uh, And most of the time, what they're trying to do is treat themselves. They're trying to feel good, feel normal, uh, not have that agitation in their heads all the time. And that is, surprisingly, um, people don't talk about that a whole bunch. You know, they always, oh, we don't want to put my uh, my kid on medication because uh, it's a gateway drug and he'll win. No, no, no. The kids who become drug abusers are the ADHDers who didn't get treated. Okay? Did you hear me? The kids who become... Drug abusers are the ones who didn't get treated early. Uh, I don't know how to make it any more clear than that. The research is very, very clear. Um, if you treat a kid, by the time they're in high school, they've developed the tools and the ways of handling you know, the problems with concentration and the problems uh, with attention and the problems with organization and time management and all that stuff. So they're ready to go smoking right through. The ones who didn't are not going to do well in school. They're going to hate being in school. They're going to think they, you know, this is on the down low. They're not really saying this to anybody, but they're thinking, I can't do this stuff. I don't know how to do this stuff. I'm always going to screw it up if they keep trying to make me do these, these things. And then so what do they do? They find other disenfranchised kids, kids who aren't happy with the school system, kids who aren't uh, doing much of anything positive, you know, who are hanging out a lot, you know, up at night and, uh, well, all kinds of different places, street corners, malls, you name it, uh, parking lots, uh, just hanging out. And... Um, that's where they start getting into a whole world of trouble, including various recreational substances, and uh, almost all of which are not legal for them, uh, and a lot of them aren't legal for any of us. So, but that's where you know they're more likely to do that if they aren't plugged in, if you will, to to education. Uh, to to the school system in some way or other, okay? Maybe they only want to go to school because they want to play football or basketball or baseball, whatever. As long as they know they have to stay eligible to play, that's a big help to you. And like I said, I've said multiple times, you need to get a good evaluation, a good, strong evaluation. And an evaluation for ADHD is tricky, okay? Because you have to rule in some things and rule out some other things, okay? Anxiety, a lot of times, can look like ADHD. Uh, uh, so you have to rule that out. You have to, okay, what's, how smart are they? I mean, typically an ADHD, most ADHD kids are, are brighter than, than the average kid. Uh, but there's no rule that says it has to be that way. Uh, and you know you can't you can't just look at somebody and tell if they've got a learning disability or not. If you're really good at this stuff and you can kind of look at their schoolwork and say, "Ooh, I think I know what's going on here." But most of most of us are not trained to do that, um, and so you, that has also got to be ruled out. So you've got to have it have it as early as possible. 
It's got to rule out a bunch of stuff. IQ problems, uh, learning disabilities, anxiety. Uh, well, the, of course, ver visual and, and auditory disturbances, you know. They can't see very well or hear very well. That's a whole different issue, but hopefully that, that is done fairly routinely. Um, but you've got, like I said, you've got to rule out some things and you've got to rule in some things. And you also have to have, uh, this is a little bit different than most uh, diagnoses, you have to have behavioral observations. That is, uh, reports from the teacher. And, well, usually, like in my practice, I get feedback from the parents and I get feedback from the teachers. Okay, I don't get it from, you know, five teachers now, but uh, we get one or two, and then plus the parents. And to make a diagnosis of ADHD, you have to have objective data, that is testing that is consistent with ADHD. And we also have to have uh, behavioral observations that suggest it's causing difficulties in different environments. Okay, so it's a little bit more of a two-step than, than most kinds of evaluation. But you've got to get it done. You need to get it done early. Uh, it doesn't, I mean, it's all covered by your insurance, and it it's not that big a deal, even if it ends up that, no, your kid doesn't have ADHD. It isn't, it's better to know, because you'll learn a lot of things about how he or she operates uh, besides whether or not there's ADHD. But that needs to be done early. I can't can't emphasize that too much. As I've, I know I've told, uh, told you guys out there, but one of the things, uh, it's not that I hate to see him, but it's just that it kind of touches at my heartstrings when I get some 29-year-old or 30-year-old person uh, who maybe was told in elementary school that they might have ADHD or maybe even was even treated but then quit uh, back in the fourth grade or something. And now they're coming in to me because they want to get started on treatment basically because their life sucks. They are sick of getting fired. They are sick of getting disciplined by the boss. They are sick of broken relationships. And they may be sick of drinking or smoking or one, one, one thing or another that they do to deal with the stress. Um, they're the tricky ones. Well, they're not tricky to evaluate. I mean, the evaluation is pretty, pretty constant, but they sometimes need a lot of work therapy-wise after they're diagnosed. Because they have carry, they're carrying a whole load of low self-esteem and anxiety and sad moods and, and all, all that sort of thing that they've developed over the years because they're not making it. All their other friends are, you know, graduating from medical school or law school or just bachelor's degrees. Uh, and, or some of them are just, you know, gone off into the world and uh, have good jobs, you know, doing more technical stuff. Maybe they're electricians or plumbers or that sort of thing. But these people are lagging behind the power curve. And they're very frustrated by that. And they, you know, and when I do the feedback session, I tell them, yeah, you do have ADHD and we need to get you started. Uh, on some medication right away, I get three, three different responses usually. Some are just so dang relieved it's not even funny. It's like, oh, thank God. I thought something was wrong, but I didn't know what. That's one. The other thing I get is anger a lot of times. Why didn't my parents or why didn't the teachers say anything or how come I never got evaluated back in, you know, okay. And then the last one is just 
sadness. I've had people burst into tears uh, just because I've wasted so much time, so much of my life is just already gone and I haven't been able to make the most of it. And I'll tell you, you know, I, I've been doing this a long time, but that kind of gets to you, you know, you, that, 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 that hits you in, in your own heart. Okay, so depression. Uh, it's, it's very frequent with ADHD. Uh, so the trick is to start treating the ADHD rapidly uh, and you can inter intercept and interrupt the depression ideally. And if you can't, you can still treat it, but it's a lot easier to treat it if the ADHD is out of the way. That is just under control. Okay, that's me. I am Dr. Terry James Gingrass. This is Dr. G's ADHD Chat, uh, the show to try to make the world safe for ADHD. Because remember, I keep saying this, ADHDers are outside-the-box thinkers. And those folks are the ones that are going to solve the world's biggest problems. And the Lord knows we got a lot of problems to solve. So cherish your ADHD child. Okay, we will catch you next time. I'm available at terrygingrassphd.com uh, or you know, somewhere around here you can write a comment or ask a question. Uh, I'll be more than willing to give you any kind of uh, new information that you're interested in. Okay, we'll catch you next time.